When you look at those maps, you start to ask yourself, what was life like at that time? You can see how the homes were lined up. You can see how the streets began to develop. You can see where the chapel was located. And you actually are seeing the history just by turning the pages of each of those maps, one after the other after the other. Fire insurance maps first came to New York City in approximately 1849, 1850. The fire in 1835 was in lower Manhattan, on the east side of Manhattan, and it wiped out blocks and blocks and blocks because, you see, there were no fire departments then, and fire was a very, very terrible element in, in living in, in a city. Daniel Alfred Sanborn founded his company in 1867, trying to create for insurance companies, fire insurance company maps. The more detailed the map, at least at that time, the easier it would be for the insurance company to assess the fire insurance risk. They could tell how close the structures were to one another. Was it a wooden structure? They could tell the nature of the neighborhood within which the structure stood. Those sorts of things were the kinds of things that would help them at a glance to begin to assess, is this a high risk area, is it a high risk structure? And how am I going to go about deciding whether I want to accept that risk or not when I insure it? These maps showed everything from what was it made of all the way down to is there a chicken coop behind the structure? Is there a doghouse in some instances? I'm an urban archaeologist, and just recently on East 21st Street, a developer was about to build over two former house lots. So I was asked to do a study to see what might be there. Um, this is the block of my concern right here. It's between 2nd and 1st Avenues and between 21st and 22nd Street. There is nothing built on them in 1849. Then it was becoming an urban environment in this part of the city. These little um, dashed lines show sort of a meadowland or a wetland. The elevated line had come in in the 18, early 1870s, then becomes easier to get here and get to work, and obviously it develops. If you were to walk down the block, you might not think that things had changed that much, but if you could take an aerial view and go into the backyard on the block, you would see that more had gone on behind. There were more brick structures behind, there are back houses that weren't there earlier. What these could be could be a back porch, they could be you know, like a, a mud room, or they could be a water closet. The heyday of the Sanborn Map Company was really the roaring 20s, and the company had over a thousand employees. I started working for Sanborn Map Company in 1945. When I first came, they, it was really quite old fashioned. We also have pictures showing how they started it. We had maybe 15 different departments, a finishing department, pasting department, um, drafting department, surveyor's department. The Sanborn Walk was an intentionally measured pace. It was intended to be about 30 inches. It was considered astonishingly accurate. Their reporters, they had been shot at by smugglers who didn't understand why somebody would be sketching their, their particular shack at the time. There were a lot of stories about them being picked up during wartime as potential spies. This is the 1920 Sanborn, after it's been pasted up to update it to 1956. This is when all the paste-ups come in, the pages get thinner, and any changes are shown with these pasted-on pieces of paper. The interesting thing here is that the two lots have not changed. They're still brick dwellings. Uh, many of these earlier brick structures, the dwellings have been um, replaced. This is now an eight-story apartment building. There's a garage behind it or below it, and of course there are the other garages. The building, the block has changed. By the 1950s, fire insurance companies were learning other and different ways, really, to to assess fire risk at that time, and they were beginning to move away from those maps. When they came up and they said to everyone in the department, Put down your brushes and you can go home because we're now closed. Nobody would get up and leave. They practically had to pull them out of the chairs because nobody wanted to leave. They had worked here so many years and they loved it so much. Around 2003, corporate headquarters was relocated to Colorado Springs. 
We have offices throughout the country from Portland, Oregon, Ann Arbor, Michigan, St. Louis, Charlotte. Recently, Sanborn Map has done aerial photography and planimetric mapping for New York City. We work with satellite imagery. We do a lot of classification. Helen Barikas works in the finishing department for the Sanborn Map Company. The traditional business of updating the fire insurance map has been dwindling over the years, and the reason for use of those maps in the hard copy format is the instant ability to look at a page and get the sense of exactly what the neighborhood is like. I don't like black and white, I like color. That's it, and I think everybody feels the same thing, the same way that they like to have it in color. You are discovering something and seeing something that you may never have thought of, seeing something that um, no one might ever have thought that you'd be interested in, and it is extremely exciting.